Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Inglebard. What's this? Well, you know they warn you that you could go blind, but no one ever says anything about damaging your wrists. Haha, <laughs> no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I've just got to keep this on for a couple of weeks while I recover from a repetitive stress injury caused by too many keyboard shortcuts in the programs that I use. But enough about that. Welcome to the latest edition of Utterly Pointless Comparisons. No, this is not a re-upload. Last time I took a look at the arcade and Game Boy Advance versions of Final Fight. Today, I'll be looking at the arcade and Sega CD versions of Final Fight. It's a little tough to do a spec comparison since we're dealing with a system and an add-on, but I gave it a whirl, so here, take a look, there's the best I could do. And now a quick recap. Capcom released Final Fight into the arcades on its CPS-1 hardware at the end of 1989. The game looked incredible. It had huge characters, tons of them on screen at once, fluid animation, and just loads and loads of colors. In short, it looked way better than any other scrolling beat-em-up of the era. About three and a half years later, in 1993, Sega released a port of Final Fight for the Sega CD slash Mega CD. Now, despite the time gap in the releases, the Sega CD version is not even close to being a perfect port of the game, and considering the difference in power and hardware, there was no way it was ever going to be. Still, having said that, the Sega CD port of Final Fight was by far the best way to experience this game at home in the West for many years after its release. Its only real competition was the release of the Super Nintendo game in 1991, and Final Fight CD is way better than that one in every way except for one. Color. Anyway, I'll go into all the details in the commentary track while I show you the comparison. This is a long game, so feel free to settle in and just chill out while you watch the whole thing. Throw it on at night before you go to bed or something, I don't mind. Anyway, quick note about my recording methodology. For this game, I just played both versions straight through from start to finish. Nothing fancy. I left in all my deaths and continues and everything. The one edit I did make is I cut out some of the loading time from the Sega CD version just to help keep the games in sync for the comparison video. So just keep in mind that if you play this game on Sega CD, there is load time of about 1 to 4 seconds between scenes. Alright, let's get on with it, shall we? First off, yeah, the lack of color in the Sega CD version doesn't give the best first impression. Also, did you see that? The wrong oil drum was out of place on Sega CD. And one of the enemies was missing. Worst version of Final Fight ever. On the other hand, all the stuff on the screen and the animation was impressive on a home system even in 1993. At first glance, aside from the lack of color, these games seem to look almost identical. But if you look carefully, nearly all the graphics have been redrawn on Sega CD. Why didn't they just reuse the arcade graphics? Well, because the CPS-1 has a horizontal resolution of 384 pixels, while the Sega CD and Genesis have a max horizontal resolution of 320 pixels. Everything would have been stretched super wide if they just imported the graphics. And you can see the details are often a lot different on Sega CD. So they didn't just use a program to squash the graphics horizontally or anything. They actually redrew just about everything. One more thing apparent in the Sega CD version is the dithering, which I hate, and despite what anyone tells you, doesn't look any better on a CRT. It's too bad this game really butts up against the color limitations of the system so hard. I can forgive the dithering in this game a bit, because there really wasn't much else they could do. And you'll notice we have the nice flickering lights intact here with the screen going blue when they're out on FFCD. Also, take a gander at how different the knives look on the ground in the two games. Weird, huh? Try and keep your eye on how each object looks throughout the game. As we pop out into the boss area, check out the enemy J. When he turns his back in the arcade, you can see the word BAD written on his jacket. In Final Fight CD, BAD is replaced by a blob of pixels. Also, it's pretty interesting to look at all the differences in the background details. The angles, the design, there are just so many subtle changes. I highly suggest pausing a couple of times throughout to really take it in. Oh, and of course we have nice Red Book audio in the Sega CD port. Some of it's awesome, and some of it isn't. Alright, enough fun stuff, let's talk censorship. In the US version, Damned has been renamed Thrasher, 
just like he was on SNES. In other censorship news, Poison and Roxy are in this version unlike the SNES and GBA games, but their outfits have been edited, giving them longer shirts and shorts. Sorry, horny underboob and butt-cheek fans. Also, when you stab with or throw the knife in FFCD, there's no blood like there is in the arcade game. Thank God Sega protected us from all this stuff we already saw in the arcade version almost four years prior. I mean, if I'd seen a glimpse of Underboob on Sega CD in 1993, I might be living on the streets today. On to the subway. Kinda hard to believe in this dilapidated city that the subway would be this clean, right? I mean, this subway is so clean, I actually wouldn't even mind eating the roasted chicken that I busted out of an oil drum right off the floor. Also notice anything strange about the proportions of the train? It's much taller in the arcade version. Because of this, we also see a little more detail above the train in the Sega CD port. Oh, might as well note here that the Sega CD version does feature two-player simultaneous play, and it can have up to four enemies on screen at once. That's a lot less than the arcade original, but it's enough to keep the game intense throughout. The posters behind the broken windows on the train look different in both versions. And look at poor Andor here. How's he supposed to fit onto that tiny train? Don't worry, it's magically bigger on the inside. Kind of like a cartoon character's pockets. Man, the Sega CD version of this song is great, isn't it? We'll hear it more in the next section. As we walk onto the train, we can see a few more differences. The hooks at the top of the screen on Sega CD are noticeably smaller. Also, the advertisements behind the hooks are different between the two games. And oddly enough, the graffiti on the door is slightly different too. In the arcade, the left door says HEZ1 and the right one says DEF1. While in the Sega CD, the left door says HEZOHE and the right door says DEEOHE. Super important, am I right? Final Fight CD does have the distressed seats on the train that are missing from the SNES and GBA ports. In those versions, the seats are all perfectly neat. Take a look at the windows on the train for a moment here, and you'll see that the broken glass patterns are different between the two versions of the game. Now the lights that whiz by in the background of the arcade game have sort of a blue glow around them, or at least a blue section of wall around them. In the Sega CD port, we see the lights, but it's just black all around them. Oh, and did you notice the color of the timer is different between the two versions? <laughs> now you did. One thing I hadn't had a chance to talk about yet, but I will now, is that your punching speed is noticeably slower in FFCD compared to the arcade game. It's not a big problem throughout most of the game, but there are a few times when it has an impact like when you're fighting a bunch of Hollywoods or Elgatos. Another thing that I did talk about in the GBA version is that if you press a direction on the D-pad while you're punching, you can automatically go into a throw instead of an uppercut, and that does work in this version also. And the final section of the train here is another area where we see some differences in the proportions of the background objects between the two games.
All right, one more section to go before we reach the boss. There are some pretty odd differences here. For some reason, the pipes on the wall have more colors and are wider in Final Fight CD. Also, the floor color is kind of weird on Sega CD, but unlike the GBA version, we get plenty of water drops dripping down from the pipes, so clearly the Sega CD is the superior version. And hey, look at that, the bad guys kick all the drums over on Sega CD. Isn't that nice? On the downside, the Sega CD version is missing the garbage cans from the arcade game. Also, this is where we start to see a little sprite flicker on Sega CD, which will definitely be noticeable from this point forward. Regarding the music, I'd say that it's weird that in this song on Sega CD, they de-emphasized the lead instrument and pretty much went with the rhythm as the lead instead. It still sounds pretty good, but also like it's missing something. Because, well, you know, it is. Boss fight. Sodom has once again been renamed to Katana, just like in the SNES version. Oh, look at this. The crowd is more detailed and has more color on Sega CD, which just doesn't make any sense at all. Something else that I'll point out now, in case you haven't noticed it yet, is that the character icons by the life bars look very different on Sega CD compared to the arcade game. And this applies to both the players and the enemies. Did you notice that? Ah, oh, the first bonus round. And because nothing says hero like senseless wanton vandalism, we'll now smash up some stranger's car at a gas station. Kinda oddly, if you look at the gas pumps, in the arcade game it just has gibberish on them. On Sega CD, the far one says HU, and the near one says DOA. If we look at the station itself, the doors have text on them that says closet in the arcade game, which I assume was a mistranslation of the word closed. While on Sega CD, the letters hilariously say oil self. The stages of destruction and the internal parts of the car look different in both versions. Here's a little more censorship. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right, stage three. The buildings in the background are smaller and the moon is smaller in Final Fight CD than the arcade game. The lack of color here makes the two games look pretty different at the beginning of the stage. The posters on the wall look a little different in each game too. In arcade Final Fight, we have up to about seven enemies on screen in this area. On Sega CD, as always, we're limited to four. FFCD is missing the foreground and background characters hanging around outside of the bar. It's also missing a bunch of patrons inside the building as you approach the bar. About seven or eight of them if we look at the arcade game next to it. Finally, FFCD is also missing a couple of guys from the foreground and background at the bar itself. But most importantly of all, the plants look different in the two versions of the game. That's it. Game ruined. Oh, and the shelves behind the bar are stocked differently in each game, showing once again that these graphics were redrawn on Sega CD and not just squished down. Now, I do also want to call out here that unless you look at these two games right next to each other like I am right now, you'd probably never notice a lot of this stuff. When Final Fight CD came out in 1993, aside from the obviously reduced colors and dithering, this is a game that seemed really close to the arcade original. And really, it is, considering the hardware limitations of the system it's on. Playing this two players simultaneously at home with this level of quality was amazing back at that time.
Yay, it's the Endor Ring! The sweatiest place on Earth! Not a whole lot to say here. The games look very similar in this area. Both versions have animated audience members in the background. How many? Only a loser would count that. Oh, and there's ten animated audience guys in each version. What? As we move on, we see once again the disgracefully different plants. After forcing myself to continue past that obvious tragedy, we can see, hey, there are fewer bystanders in the background, and the background layer itself is once again simplified on the Sega CD port. Alright, this area sucks in every version of the game. I hate the very limited vertical space in which you have to walk around. Not only is it annoying, but forcing all the sprites so close together results in some flicker on Sega CD. Content-wise, Final Fight CD is missing the bystanders from this section as well. And the vocals in this song on Sega CD? They're kind of strange. I mean, you get used to them, but they've always sounded weird to me, and they still do. Alright, boss time! It's Eddie E and his famous health-restoring ABC gum! Just grab that freshly spit-out wad and gobble it right down. Delicious. Again, Final Fight CD has fewer bystanders in the background, and many of the ones that are there look noticeably different. Also, in that version, their animation is hilariously fast. And also, the Sega CD really flexes its power here by having one more animated guy than the arcade version. Well, that tears it. I guess the Sega CD Final Fight is the best version of Final Fight. You know, except that it isn't. Alright, Stage 4. This is the stage that was famously cut from the SNES ports of the game. The layout's a little different between the arcade and Sega CD here. In Final Fight CD, everything is much closer to the bottom of the screen instead of the middle of the screen like the arcade game. And also, the ceiling is lower. And right here, we catch a rare glimpse of slowdown in the CD port. Primarily when there are 12 flames and 4 enemies on screen at once. FFCD does have a few instances where it slows down, but thankfully it's uncommon. Aside from that, another thing worth pointing out here is the flames that sprout out of the ground in Final Fight CD look quite different from the arcade game. Same with the Molotov cocktail flames, if you didn't notice that earlier. Oh, and the pool of molten metal in the bottom of the screen is way brighter in the arcade original. Once again, the background layer has been simplified a bit in Final Fight CD. As we move on, quite a few elements of the background design on FFCD differ from the arcade version in this area. For example, the pipes near the hatches aren't cracked in the Sega CD version, and the word danger looks clearer and is spelled correctly on Sega CD, the area above the hatches looks different, and there are more little details like some extra indentations on some hatches in the Sega version. Now when it comes to music, the CD version stands head and shoulders above the original with this song. It sounds really great and is one of my favorite songs in this version of the game.
Another weird thing that I hadn't had a chance to talk about yet, which I'll bring up now, is that in Final Fight CD, when you swing a weapon or throw an enemy, there's some weird animation lag. It sort of freezes the object that you're holding and keeps it in place for a few extra frames before it moves on to the last animation frame of the throw or swing. I always wondered what the deal with that was. Surely the 12 MHz CPU of the Sega CD could have handled the speed of this game and its moving objects, right? Right? Alright, things are surprisingly different here on the elevator. First, the Sega CD loses the parallax scrolling as we ascend for some reason. Next, it's got a big beam behind the ladder that's just totally not there in the arcade game. And what's this? In the arcade, the enemies have some unique sitting animation frames, where they dangle off of the girders. These frames are missing from the Sega CD port. That's it, I'm changing my mind again. Worst version of Final Fight ever. Might I change my mind further? Who knows, I'm crazy! Also, check out those beams on the left and right of the screen, just behind the elevator itself. They're thinner and less detailed on Sega CD. Now, the enemies are positioned slightly differently on Sega CD here, to work within its sprite limitations. For example, in the arcade game, while you're fighting the second batch of enemies on the elevator that includes an Andor, three Elgatos drop down and join the fray. On Sega CD, it's still got the three Elgatos, but they don't drop down until you've taken care of the entire prior group of enemies. And the CD version of this song is pretty good, but it's really slow and way less intense than the arcade game. I still like the song, but it really doesn't fit the game as well. Alright, in the arcade version, here's our boss, Rolento. In that version, you'll fight him with however many enemies are already on screen. On the Sega CD, you don't fight him until you kill all the other enemies first. Why? Well, the key is in how Rolento moves. He's got a trail of shadows behind him. Those are all sprites, of course. The Sega CD couldn't handle a bunch of enemies, and basically a bunch of Rolento sprites, without slowing down, flickering, or most likely both. Oh, also, about Rolento, most annoying boss ever! Stand still, you little sh**! Alright, our second and final bonus round! Not much to report here other than some color changes, and slightly different design of the glass sprites. Alrighty, here's Stage 5, one of the longest beat-em-up levels known to mankind. This one is also basically the equivalent of a long single-take action scene in a movie or TV show. It's not broken up into areas, it's just one long continuous level. 
right from the start on Sega CD we're missing the fencing in the foreground at the bottom of the screen. The moon is also smaller and higher up, and the buildings in the background are less detailed. Now I know anyone that's watched my GBA Final Fight comparison has only one thing on their mind right now, and that is, how does the barking dog on Sega CD compare to the arcade game? Well, you're just so impatient. I've got some generic thugs to bash through. We'll see the dog soon enough. <laughs> some people. Okay, there's the little booger now. He's a lot less detailed in Final Fight CD, and seems to be missing his nose. Poor boy. Or girl. Whatever he or she is. At least the dog's animation speed is reasonable in the CD port. And look at that face. He looks so much happier on Sega CD. Good doggy. Sadly, I do have to report that the Sega CD game is missing the crushed soda can to the right of the dog. And here, everything had been going so well. I don't even know if I can go on now. Yeah, what the hell. So here in the arcade game, we bust up nine wooden barrels on this part. How many barrels will there be in Final Fight CD? Well, in one of the greatest travesties in all of human history, there are only six barrels on Sega CD. Let us try to overcome this nightmare together. The big tree looks noticeably different between the two games. In the arcade original, it looks kind of like a Christmas tree with spread out branches. On Sega CD, the tree design is a lot more basic. And here's another smidge of flicker in FFCD. You know, I've gotta say that while the outfits for Poison and Roxy look pretty dumb on the Sega CD port, I think I actually like their colors better on Sega CD than I do in the arcade version. Sort of fits the punk rock aesthetic better. Now we're headed on to everyone's favorite room, the bathroom. There are some interesting differences here. First in the arcade game you can see the background layer behind the broken window, but not on Sega CD. Second, the graffiti on the doors is pretty different between the two games. They took out the word sexy on Sega CD. God forbid some innocent sweet child that I'm sure never ever had a naughty thought in their entire innocent lives saw the word sexy on a door in stage 5 of the same game that didn't even bother to remove the word dick from the doors in stage 1. 
Anyway, the area in front of the sink is also more dilapidated in the arcade game. Because I just love talking about sinks, allow me to point out here that Final Fight CD heinously omits the sink from the right side of the bathroom. Great! That was my favorite sink in the entire game! Now this area here seems like kind of a wasted opportunity. We have all these motorcycles in the background, and never fight an enemy on a motorcycle. What gives? Here we get to watch Darwinism at work as a bunch of Hollywoods burn themselves to death. Thanks for saving me the trouble of killing you, fellas. Ugh, I hate this part. Watch me struggle to take down a whole bunch of Hollywoods and Elgados. In the GBA comparison I did, I mentioned they must have some evil scientist cloning all of these guys. I mean, they must, right? Yet they only clone the standard enemies and not the bosses. Talk about inefficient. Now we get to make our way through some more nondescript enemy scrubs. Alright, in the arcade version, as we reach the Statue of Liberty, which in this world is in Metro City for some reason, it looks like she's standing up and peeing directly on the sun, which frankly raises a few questions. The Sega CD version classes things up a bit and removes the pee stream. Way to go, Sega! And here's Abigail, who, you know, is just Andor with a different head and a couple of powered-up moves. As an aside, it's crazy how gigantic they decided to make Abigail in Street Fighter V. Have you seen him in that game? He's a g monster!
Alright, that's the end of Abigail and both versions of Final Fight that we're looking at today. Now we begin Stage 6, the final stage of the game. And this stage is even longer than the last one, but at least it's broken up into sections unlike the last level. So as this stage begins, we can see that the Sega CD port omits the parallax scrolling, because it hates us. Also, most of those signs or billboards in the background look very different on Sega CD. I mean, just look. In the arcade, we have confectionery country Nin Nin. On Sega CD, it's only Nin Nin. Guess he's been booted out of the baking business. Oddly, they also got rid of the word Capcom in the background and replaced it with Ume Ume. Why? I guess because Capcom didn't make this version? I mean, sure, let's go with that as the reason. Hey, take a look at the statue in the middle of the column. In the arcade, she's topless. In Final Fight CD, she's holding the robe over her evil, evil boobs that you absolutely can't look at. Also on Sega CD, she has no face, which is frankly the more disturbing change to me. Yawn. Here's yet another giant mob of enemies. But that's what this level is all about. Trivia time, I guess. Did you know that this game was originally called Street Fighter 89 when it was in development? It was originally designed to be a follow-up to Street Fighter starring Ryu and Ken? Okay, you probably did know that, but give me a break, I used all the more obscure trivia in the GBA episode. Oh, and speaking of the GBA, unlike that version, we get to watch our player ride up the elevator here. Nice. I assume that the Sega CD elevator must be wind-powered, because if you look, you'll see that there's no cable either above or below it. Also, the handrail is missing. So dangerous. Okay, here's another fun section. We've got a ton of enemies to fight here, and a very compressed vertical space within which to fight them. Now this is the same song that played during the elevator section, and in the arcade, it's fast and intense and it really fits an area where you're constantly assaulted. Now on Sega CD, the song does sound good like I mentioned earlier, but it really doesn't fit the pace of the action in this section. Oh, and notice something here? In the GBA Final Fight episode, I mentioned that there are never more than two Andors on screen at the same time. But right here on the much more hardware-limited Sega CD, we've got three of them! Take that portable 32-bit game system that came out eight years after this game!
Now I haven't manually counted the enemies here, but I'm sure this section is taking longer on Final Fight CD since we fight fewer of those enemies at a time. At least, that's the theory I'm going with. One more oddity I'll point out now is that when your character walks in Final Fight CD, the sprite kind of shakes while the screen is scrolling. But only when the screen is scrolling and not when they're just walking around during a static screen. Why? Don't know. I guess it's not quite calculating the sprite's offset within the level correctly while the screen scrolls. Okay, two more sections of the mansion to go. Man, is this place big or what? I think you could fit all of England into this mansion and still have enough room for France. I mean, how huge must Metro City be to contain this gigantic mansion alone? Best not to ponder these things, I suppose. Anyway, yeah, I beat up a bunch of thugs in here. Look at me go. At least you get to listen to the best song in the game again. And there's nothing wrong with that. The biggest difference visually in this area, aside from the colors, is that the armor statues in the background on Sega CD have more rounded shields and the sides of the helmet are a lot more pronounced. The statues are also a bit wider and in a lot of ways more detailed on Sega CD. Say, anyone else wonder how many post offices must be in this mansion? Alright, there are a few other name and spelling differences in the two versions of the game. Here's an example right now. G. Oriber in the arcade game becomes G. Oliber on Sega CD. Oh, and in this section, the background buildings are a lot simpler on Final Fight CD when compared to the arcade version. Another difference here is that the falling chandeliers are a lot easier to avoid in Final Fight CD. If you stay sort of on the top line of the area that you can move within, you can just walk right on past them and not give them a second thought.
Oh, man, still going on this part. But don't worry, dear viewers. The end is nigh, I tell you. At last, we've reached the final area of Final Fight. That's a lot of final, isn't it? Once again, we can see our much more modest statues in the Sega CD port of the game. And also, as we've discussed many times up till now, the poor Sega CD version of Final Fight also has way fewer enemies here. I mean, this part is where the arcade game gets serious and is just like, nah, f*** it, and throws ten enemies at you at once. While on Sega CD, as ever, we're limited to four enemies on screen at once. Now visually, aside from the color reduction in the statues, really the only other difference here is the less detailed background layer. As we approach Belger's Lair, the floor pattern is much more complex in the arcade game. And the stained glass in the background looks a lot nicer in the arcade version too. And here we are. Here's Belger. Notice his chair design is entirely different between these two versions of Final Fight. Also, hey, Belger is holding Jessica's upper thigh in the arcade game. On Sega CD, his other hand is just kinda missing. The rest of this fight is pretty similar in both versions. You've got a bunch of punks getting in your way while you try to take out the big bad who, no matter what, will go flying out that window to the right when you finish him off. Speaking of which... Yeah, f*** you, Belger. Now, the ending gets a little weird, too. On Sega CD, all the dialogue is voiced, of course, and very badly at that. We also get nice large pictures instead of little itty bitty ones.
I'm so sorry, Jessica. I thought I'd lost you like I lost your mother. I'll never let anything bad happen to you again. So, just like the GBA version I looked at last time, you walk only through the rooftop palm tree area on Sega CD, while in the arcade version, Cody and Guy walk through the last few areas. Also, WTF, why are they just walking away after saving Jessica? Cody's supposed to be her current boyfriend. After he saves her, he's just like, nah, I'm good, and walks away. And here's Guy being a jerk and punching Cody's lights out for absolutely no reason. I suppose he had a thing for Jessica. And here's I Jessica can't... being turned on by Cody, leaving to go fight the evil that stalks the street, instead of, you know, spending time with her after he just saved her life. Oh, Cody. People are starting to talk. Alright, and that'll do it for my comparison of the arcade and Sega CD versions of Final Fight. Here are my closing thoughts on the matter. As I mentioned at the start of this video, Final Fight CD was by far the best way to play this game at home in the West at the point that it came out and for many years after that. No, the game wasn't perfect. Even back then, it was clear that it had fewer colors and fewer enemies on screen than the arcade version. But it otherwise looked and played so close to the arcade game that it was easy to forget about that stuff in the moment. And on top of that, we also had the great Redbook Audio CD soundtrack. Some people think it's the best way to experience this game's music. For me, I think some of the music is great on the CD version and some of it's not, like I said. <laughs> but uh, overall, it's pretty well put together. So one more thing I'll mention is that Final Fight CD is a game that was not well appreciated in its own time. If we look at the EGM review, two of the reviewers gave it sixes while two of them gave it eights. For the reviewers that gave it sixes, I can only assume they were on some sort of mind-altering drugs at the time. What were their complaints? They didn't understand why it needed to be on the CD format. Well, number one, review the game for the format it's on, who cares? And number two, it's obvious why they used the CD format. They wanted the game to include all the animation frames from the arcade game, they wanted it to have all the unique background tiles, they wanted it to have the CD Audio Redbook soundtrack, and they also wanted to use the Sega CD's PCM chip to have all those sound effects play accurately. Seems like a pretty good set of reasons to me, what about you guys? I think the bigger issue here is that Final Fight CD came out at a time when Final Fight was kind of in that no-man's land, meaning it was a few years old at that point, but it wasn't old enough for people to view it as a classic and have nostalgia for it. So a lot of people in 1993 just kind of saw Final Fight CD as a port of an old arcade game. And this theory is borne out by the fact that the game has a much better reputation now than it did when it was new. Alright everyone, what did you think about Final Fight CD? What's your favorite home port of the game? Let me know all about it in the comments. And that'll bring us to the close of another video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it online somewhere. If you haven't yet, subscribe! Hit that notification bell so you'll know when my latest video comes out. Also, I just recently set up Ko-fi and Patreon pages, so if you want to contribute to the channel and support the work that I do here, you can now do that, and I would greatly appreciate it. Alright, with that, I'll say thanks for watching, and see me later!